for you tonight. But listen, we gonna show them how to get it. Throw your hands up like this. Come on. Because I found out that when you let God arise in your praise, your enemies will be scattered. Come on. Scream. Everybody lift. Everybody lift. Everybody lift. Everybody lift. Welcome back to the View from the Pew uh, from uh, the Christmas holidays. I'm tongue tied. I'm, I'm having church already here at the View from the Pew at 99.3 FM. That was my friend Ernest Pew, uh, all the way from the Nassau, the Bahamas Project. The video clip that you saw up there was my friends, uh, Pastor John and Judy Chapman. They're going to be joining us at the Church Without a Congregation New Year's Eve for a one hour service, sermon, worship uh, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. down in Palmyra, uh, Palmyra Methodist Episcopal. Episcopal Church, the church without a congregation, uh, for a New Year's Eve restoration service. That's a candlelit service. Um, it's a it's a service uh, dedicating the building back to its restoration project. Now that the IRS so diligently gave up the 501c3 in the name of Jesus, Amen, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so join us there at 6 p.m. on New Year's Eve for that service at um, uh, Palmyra, Iowa, uh, Highway S23, six miles south of Carlisle. If you need information, you can check us out here at the View from the View, or hit me up on my Facebook page. I am delighted that you are here after Christmas, the celebration of the birthday of Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Oh, my hair is a hot mess today. I forgot to put some some product in it, but we'll just deal with that on the break. <laughs> My sister from another mother, Judy Chapman, is here in the studio with me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Reich. You are a blessing. I have to tell you, just the, the smile on you is enough to send me into 2014 right now. All right. Amen. Um, I'm just going to jump right in. Will you open us in prayer real quick? I would love to. Just go ahead. Okay. Let it be. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, ever praising your name. So thankful for... Um, this time of year when we can remember the birth of Jesus Christ uh, and celebrate that he came, that uh, through all the plan that you had to bring him here, it came and he was born, Father, and we know him and we can celebrate him. Father, I pray over this hour that um, any any ear that's listening that would need a word of hope, a word of encouragement, a word of understanding, Father, that they would receive all that you have for them during this time, Father. And we just thank you and give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If that's not enough to make you shout, I don't know what it's all about. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You and I have been like friends from way back, and our families even go way back. You know, my, my brother, my real brother, yes, my I do. birth brother, my blood brother. Yes, I do. From my mother. Yes. Mr. Bradley Evan. Yes. And you have such fond memories of him because he was actually used as a vessel to help lead you to Christ. Correct? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And, and I, I'm not even going to go to the left side. We'll just stay on the right side. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, God is good. And, and God used him as a vessel to lead you to Christ. And you have been sold out ever since. Completely. And I'm just going to ask the, the real quick question. Okay. Has there ever been a turning point in your life when you said, is this real? Or, I mean, was it maybe like that night when you met them that they're like, oh, are, they, are these guys real? I mean, or are they checked out? <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. When I first met them, I kind of wondered because they were, they were on what we would call on fire for God. And I had been raised uh, denominationally and always believed, but had not ever understood that there's a passion that you can have that gets into your blood and, and causes you to change your life. And through my relationship with your brother, who literally brought me Jesus Christ, came into my apartment, shared uh, the book of John, began to read through the t New Testament, um, you know, I met the living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And you're sold out ever since. 100% on fire. <laughs> I know. I know. That's right. Look, and she says that with a smile. <laughs> She's got a, a, a grin from the East Coast to West Coast right there. And you and your your lovely family, your your husband, Pastor John Chapman, that's J-O-N. We can find you at White Dove Ministries. Uh, we can also find you at www.whitedoveministries.net. 
Uh, you have a small congregation that's been meeting for a couple of years now at 6,000 Douglas here in Des Moines, correct? Correct. And you actually started out as a home cell Bible study. Yes, with my husband and uh, myself, our two boys, and one dog, <laughs> and uh, one young couple who started out with us. And you started doing things just like a large church would. You did popcorn ministries, movie ministries, outreach. Um, you both are musicians, yes. um, praise and worship ministers. Yes, we are. And you just jumped jumped in full speed ahead, correct? Yes. And did you did you ever say, well, I know you did because I just know you, but you said, God, lead me, make me, mold me. Yes. Was there ever a time that you thought that you weren't worthy of doing it? Yes. Yes. And how did you pick up the pieces and move forward from there on? Um, Reich, I would have to say that understanding the grace, to have an understanding of the blood of Jesus Christ and the magnificence of that, what it really cost him, um, the grace that God gave to me, I can't get trapped up in myself All right. to stay there. I can't do it. There's too much to give. There's too many other people that need that experience. You know, I was speaking to a, a sister of mine that she's a talk show host out in Tacoma, Washington, and she said that that city, especially that state, is the least churched state in the nation. That you ask people, do you know Jesus Christ? And they're like, who? Wow. Or do you know Jesus? And they'll be like, Jesus, he works down at the burrito hut. You know, wow. that um, they absolutely have no idea of who Jesus Christ is. In the state of Washington? In the state of Washington. That's really sad. Yeah. And for you and I, of course, you know me, you know, you know my background. I didn't grow up in church, grew up at the golf country club, right? you know, chasing yes. balls and beers, Yes, that, that we didn't have that. Um, you know, we were C&E Christians, Christmas and Easter, and that was it. But um, thinking back now, at least I knew that there was... God out there. You'd it's heard. just that I didn't have a relationship. Right. And, but to not even know, to be born and raised in this nation, you know, grow up on the West Coast and, and not to know anything, not to know that you know that you know. Yeah. That's hard to believe in this country. It really is. As a matter of fact, to hear you say that, I kind of almost think, nah, not true. Because in our country, I mean, there's everything everywhere, but to see, to see the state of our nation, I would have to say that's, I would believe that that's true. Well, that just that, um, Naomi told me that last week and it was re reaffirmed to me. She told me actually twice to hear that. And then to hear the word that I heard last week at a uh, church in Chicago, um, apostle Matthew Stevenson, he shared the story of Herod and that the fact that Herod was, Herod was putting out a death wish on Jesus, on the seed of Mary, right. which was the birth of Christ, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, he was going to set out to kill every child yeah. that was under a certain age to make sure that he could get that seed, that Herod was actually putting out a death wish upon himself because in his own um, uh, uh, animosity that he had built up to try and find Christ, to find the Jew, the chosen one, that he um, contracted gangrene. And from gangrene, he actually got sick and died. Really? And so the the, the teaching became very intense. And then the, the apostle that was taking the, t the teaching said, you can actually say, Herod, go to hell. Because, you know, you he was committing himself to hell by his own ministry to try and set out to, to kill Christ, you know? And so you have to almost wonder, wonder what the teaching is in Washington, that if those people have no idea who Jesus Christ is, let alone if they were there, if they were Mormon or if they were Indian or Hindu or whoever, whatever they may worship, that they just don't even know who Jesus Christ is. Yeah. You have to wonder what the seeds planted were. Wow. That's in that, that area of the, the nation. Right. That's interesting. And then I, it got me to thinking as I was sitting there in, in my hotel room, I was like, okay, so the pilgrims came somewhere up by like New York, 
you know, the New England states. Yeah. And they kind of like traveled across the United States and dissipated, you know, and like died in the Midwest when they hit the winters and everything. <laughs> and then they kept going across to like Colorado and Utah, Wyoming and so on and so forth. And, you know, I'm sure that religion broke down. We, we've heard that religion broke down from the Catholic Church, Roman Catholic Church, the Lutheran Church, the Presbyterian Church, Episcopal Church, right. so on, so on, so forth. And then you come, throw John Smith into the mix and Pocahontas and they get together and have children or whatever they did, you know. I don't know that part of the story. <laughs> We'll skip but, that part. But, you know, you see the breakdown of the church. You have to wonder. But by the time that the story and the life and the works of Christ from going through the people and the works of the settlers from the East Coast to the West Coast, maybe it just didn't set in their minds and the teachings hmm. by the time it got to Washington. So we killed that seed by the time it got to Washington. Oh, wow. So we have we're so busy, Judy in our life and times of teachings and going into Honduras and going into Ecuador, going into Dominican Republic, going into China and Taiwan, that we forget about our own people right here at home. Yes. Like the, the Bible study groups that you, you and Pastor John started, you know, that there's so much work to be done right here. That is, that is true. We have a, John and I have always had a heart for this nation. Actually, when we met, which has been now, just a small shot over. Don't date mm, yourself. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I won't. Um, but we met each other, and I told him I had a heart to be um, evangelistic, Amen. but in but to this country. And likewise, he told me that he had, he had understood actually since he was six that he uh, was going to be evangelistic in this nation. And to look around our country at that time, Reich, um, it kind of sounded like a ridiculous thing to say because at that time that many, just a few years ago. A couple. Um, a couple. <laughs> You're still 26 to me. Yeah, thank you. Um, our country, though, didn't look like it does now. And they weren't trying to... Uh, America was in the beginning stages of removing God from, uh, you know, taking prayer out of school and beginning the steps of removing God out, but not as aggressively as we see now. And uh, So aggressively. Yes, Yes. I just spoke to a praise and worship minister a couple of weeks ago on the show. His name's Isaiah and he's in California. If you say the name Jesus in public in LA, you will be ticketed three offenses and you are imprisoned. Are you serious? I did not hear I've not heard that. And so as evangelists, like you say you are, and I know that you are because I know your hearts. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do and we can't let the news and the media shape Come our on, message. Preach. We can't. We don't dare let it shape us. We don't let a spirit of fear come in and um, quiet down our message. I don't care for seeker friendly things. Come on. Because it 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 uh, takes away the glory of Christ. It removes the urgency, I believe, and it says it it actually sends a message that mankind can, uh, in and of ourselves change uh inundate us with their thinking yes yes and jesus christ is jesus christ is jesus christ from the end to the beginning the beginning to the end whatever the, unchanging uh, the alpha and the omega the alpha and the omega yeah and we both understand that and we pray that you know that uh delivering that message won't cost us Hallelujah. past what we understand but we know it might come on we do we're speaking with Pastor uh, Judy Chapman of John and Judy Chapman of White Dove Ministries here in Des Moines. You can find them uh, Sundays. What time is your service? At 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock at 6,000 Douglas at White, Min White Dove Ministries. You can also find them on the World Wide Web at www.whitedoveministries.net. And, Rick, and we are in the Midwest Christian Ministries building. That's right across from the Super Target. They're at 6,000 Douglas right. and Merle Hay, yep. basically. Yep. And I tell you what, you want to get to know them and, and just know their heart, know the spirit, know the might that's in them. Judy and I were talking for probably an hour and 15 minutes last week on the phone and she ministered to me and I've been knowing this woman for a month of Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say how long. Thank you. <laughs> She's a little bit older than me. Oh, just by days, huh? <laughs> Amen. Or a few. Amen. But um, I'm getting questions all over uh, Facebook. We're going to go to a, a break here in just a second. 
call us 1-855-244-0077. You could hit us on the chat, but Bob's not here to answer it. So I, I can't do that for you. Hit me on Facebook and I'll answer it. We're here at 99.3 KTIA FM radio and also 855-244-0077. We'll take your questions there or on Facebook. Uh, you can find Ju- uh, Pastor Judy Chapman at www.whitedoveministries.net. Stay tuned. Tune in. Turn on. Turn it up in Jesus' name. We'll be right back after this. Don't go anywhere. Stay right here. We're going to have some church right after these messages. <laughs> <laughs> sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program or log on to transformationstreatment.com. Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships transform your world yes now your favorite programs on webcast one live can all be watched and listened to on any android or apple device your phone tablet or ipad yes your favorite shows on webcast one live are available live or on podcast wherever you go let me introduce to you some of our great shows Shalom! Every week on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman, we'll talk about issues in the Middle East, issues related to the Jewish tradition and religious traditions in general, and keep you up to date on exactly what's going on around the world. You may know some of the story, but you haven't heard all of the story until you've heard it on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman and our special guests we have on every week. Like right now. Did you feel anything? Yeah. You did? Um, I was dealing with some back issues um, due to the depression that I did, and right now they're gone. I have a sickness called Lyme disease. It was really bad, and I could have died up of it, but um, God healed me of it. <laughs> So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know there's an app for that. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. without being able to talk, without having a math lesson, without knowing phonics, he was still equally as threatening in seed form as he would later be on Calvary. The enemy understood that by the time he is able to decipher who he is and how he is different from everybody else in the nursery, that he is equally as dangerous. And so the problem is we are discerning now, pay attention or you miss it, a strategy from hell that whenever there is a seed there must be a slaughter in the very same manner wherever there is a word there must be warfare pay attention 
And so it seems very juvenile, very elementary, very childish of a king who is not short with his accomplishment, who is not inadequate in his ability, Ray, to be so interested in the arrival of one boy. But what made this arrival unique was the backdrop or the prophetic context by which this boy would be born. Say to hell with Herod. Open your mouth. Say to hell with Herod. Amen. We are back here at the View from the Pew. That was an excerpt from Apostle Matthew Stevenson of All Nations Church in Chicago, To Hell with Herod. And in leading into the rest of our conversation here with uh, Pastor Judy Chapman here today from White Dove Ministries, you know, we were talking earlier about Herod set up his own death wish. He was putting out a death wish curse on Jesus. And in doing so, he was putting an own death wish on himself by saying, go out and kill every male in the city, in the land, mm -hmm. because I'm going to find him one way or another. And in doing so, contracted gangrene himself. And in that, killed his own seed, his own offspring to come forward and couldn't birth any more children himself. Henceforth, cr creating a death in his own legacy, his right. own lineage. Completely. Completely. And in, in, in essence, in doing that, letting Christ being lifted up to making us heirs of the throne, Amen. king's kids. Amen. And in doing that, made us so that we can go out to the nations and do what we're supposed to do. Yep. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Hallelujah. So with that being said, do you think that in these days, the last days that we're living in, that we're failing in regards to doing that? Or my, my father always used to say, I would rather you succeed in failing instead of failing to succeed by us going out and doing what we can do. Are we still succeeding? Um, I, mm, I don't know how to measure that. Right. I know that each person has each person. Christ saved you for a reason, not just for heaven, but uh, if you're still alive here on earth after you've been saved, there's a reason why, and there's a job for you to do, and yeah. that is to find whatever calling God has inside of you. Uh, I know that there's different gifts. I know there's different callings, and we need those to come forth in the body of Christ because it is the, um, the, the combining of all those gifts together that Christ he left those intentionally so that the world could be called, so that the world could be called forth, drawn to him and... Uh, I guess by the looks it. of it now, we're failing in this country. I guess I would say perhaps we are. Okay, I can buy that. We have a caller. Frank, welcome. Merry Christmas. Well, thank you. Merry Christmas to you, too. Thank you. You have a question for us. And well, Pastor Judy uh, is here from White Dove Ministries. Question, commentary. Um, Matthew twenty four fourteen basically paraphrasing says that the gospel must be taken into every nation, kindred, and tongue. Then, then shall the end come. I don't disagree that there shouldn't be revival here at home, but I kind of take a little exception to too much focus here at home. And I just wonder this, and I'll give you a practical example of what I mean. Several years ago when uh, NASCAR was sponsored by Winston Cigarettes, I don't smoke, personally never have, but there were people who if they had a certain brand of smoke, they could trade in a pack of their smokes and get a carton of Winston's. And I'm wondering if in this country we're not so much having new converts as just people are switching brands. And I further contend that the real souls to be won, the real message to be given is overseas, uh, China, the Sudan, uh, Rwanda, places like this where the gospel needs to reach and has never reached. We've got the gospel on every street corner here in the U.S. Every, every, you know, you turn on your cable TV, there's a plethora of channels with, with, with somebody preaching the gospel. It, 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 there's churches on every street corner. And the access is there. I'm not saying everybody's heard it in the United States, not saying everybody's got it here, but the access is there. But overseas, there's so many countries and so many parts of the, of the undeveloped third world where the message has not been heard. And so... I hearken back to Matthew twenty four fourteen, where it says, it's got to go to every nation, kindred, and tongue, then shall the end come. I was wondering your feelings on that. That's a great question, Frank. I want to thank you for calling in. And, and you know, every time you call in, it's a blessing. I have to say that. <laughs> I, well, I, I asked Bob the last time you called in, I said, do you know Frank personally? He's like, I've never met him, but someday. Um, you know, and, and when by saying that, you know, 
there are a lot of nations that are being quickened to Christ right now. And I, in my travels to Chicago, I meet a lot of people that are African or Sudanese. And I will ask them, do you see um, uh, signs, wonders, and miracles taking place? They see people getting healed of AIDS, of HIV. They see, a, a, I, I, I know a gentleman that has seen a limb grow. And I was like, Rich, you know, you know Rich and Kathy Hartman? Yes, I do. Rich, Rich Hartman has seen a limb grow. And I'm like, Rich, come on. You know, and it's not that I'm skeptical in Christ. It's just that that's the Reichism in me. <laughs> you know, I, he healed my back. No surgery. I could lift up my shirt. We won't do that here, even though I'm tan. Thank you, Reich. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyhow, um, you know, these people from Kenya, Sudan, Africa, like we have nothing that we can submit everything and see the move of God in our life. And that's why people are being healed up. That's why they're seeing their, their land being healed that way. They're so poverty stricken. They're so financially stricken. So that they don't have the food. They don't have the resources. They don't have the housing that when all else seems to be lost, all they have to do is call on Christ Jesus, Judy. Yes. And that's why they are seeing the signs and the wonders and the miracles transformed that change lives forever. Yes. And I'm just saying, have we become such a decadent nation here? We have tortured ourselves so much that we have damned ourselves to hell that we we're accepting a calling that way. What do you say, Pastor Judy? That's a lot to think about. A lot to chew on. <laughs> it is. Um, I, I don't know that you can ever, I, I don't personally, I would never feel saturated, um, in that I feel that there's any nation, uh, who's received enough Amen. evangelism. I, I believe with all my heart, Frank, that, uh, in your passion for the nations, yes, maybe you're called to go. You are a very passionate man. And I agree with that, but I don't believe that America, um, is has seen enough days of evangelism going forth. I believe even all the more so because of the state that our country's in. It's funny that we just had another caller just hit me online here. And Beth says, you know, in, in retrospect to what Frank said, if I was in China and I was reading Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of kingdom will be proclaimed that throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, then that the end will come that that person standing in China is to call, be called to go to America. Right. And testify. That's a good thought. So, you know, it's it's like what's good for the goose is good for the gander, basically, when right. you want to put it in layman's terms. Yeah. Frank, thanks for that that food for thought. Um, Ryan, you said we have another call on line one. Let's just go ahead and bring them on. Go ahead. Caller, this is Reich with a view from the pew and Pastor Judy from White Dub Ministries. It's still Frank. Oh, okay. Frank. Oh, um, yeah, pardon me. I there was just one additional point I wanted to make. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the commission says, go preach, and wherever you preach, two signs shall follow. Ye shall heal the sick, and ye shall cast out unclean spirits. When you get in these undeveloped countries, that demonism, that, that possession is in your face. The, the, the superstitions, the witchcraft, the voodoo that goes on in those countries is, 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 is blatant, and it's in your face, and it has to be dealt with. You can't close somebody, uh, you know, I mean, you can't give them the gospel if somebody's naked. So you have to meet their need first, clothe them, feed them, cast out the unclean spirits, heal the sick, then preach them, then pivot and say, go and sin no more. And what I'm saying is here in, the, in this country, th there's just as much occult, there's just as much uh, demonic possession, only the stuff is more, um, where it's overt in, in the foreign lands, it's subvert here. You know, it's covert. It's it, it's more under in the shadows, not quite so out in the open. So, um, just an added thought that I wanted to make to the point that that there's so much work overseas that I'm not calling for every minister to go overseas, but I think our our our, our offerings, not so much our ties because that's kind of to fund the local uh, stuff, but our offerings and stuff. That if people are wanting to go, we need to support the people, the missionaries that are willing to go into these lands and do the hard work and do the hard lifting. And that's where I think the crux of our, our, our outreach and our ministry should be more so than here in the U.S. And, and like I say, I do, I do not, not call for revival here. 
I agree wholeheartedly with you, Frank. Uh, have you ever gone on a missions trip yourself? No, I've never. I've, I've never been overseas, but I've got a a, a, a dear friend that I've I've uh, grown up with, went to school with his girls. He donates uh, ever uh, once in a while. He his brother's a doctor out in California, and he's in his seventies. And they go overseas, and about a year at a time. They've been in China. They've been in Rwanda. Uh, they've been in, 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 in places, and you sure. see how some of our missionaries are being treated in Korea and China and Iran. Well, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to personally invite you to go to Inglewood, Chicago with me sometime. <laughs> that is a mission. That's a long way. That's a mission field in <laughs> itself right there, yes, Frank. Yes, it is. That's, that's and, right there is a battlefield. It, it is a battlefield. I tell you, my eyes were opened up um, uh, November 8th of uh, 2011. I went there, and, uh, and I got invited to, to go you know, minister in a park and people that know me know that I'm not afraid of the hood. Yeah, sure. You know, that's right. And, and, and you know me, Pastor Judy, Yes. you know, yep. and, um, my brother was very in tune with the hood and his retail sales back in the seventies and eighties <laughs> <laughs> and, um, his wholesale market, we should call it. And, um, so I said, okay, well, we'll go. And then I had heard of Inglewood, but I didn't know of Inglewood. So I get there and I'm like, man, I'm the only peach colored person around Ooh. here. And we were witnessing to prostitutes and pimps and drug dealers and gangbangers. And all of a sudden I hear, poo, 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 poo. and the pastor, uh, Harvey Pinkney said, you need uh. to get to your car, get to your car. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. And he's like, you are the only white brother in this whole neck of the woods. Get to your car. And Shirley Richardson, who I think you've met before pastor Judy, she said, you're fine. You are girded up. Amen. And uh, we were standing there. We were witnessing to a prostitute. We had just led her to Christ. The gunshot stopped. And I saw some men going across the street, and they were going door to door to door. And I thought maybe they were Jehovah Witnesses. So I went to check on them because they ducked down at a doorstep. They were putting coupons on doors for a pizza delivery. Wow. And I said, are you all right? They said, we're all right. Got to pray with them. But I thought, you know, that's my mission field. My mission field is right here in America. Yeah. And when we have all that going right on our front yard, not, not I'm not going to say my backyard, my front yard, Yeah. we have a lot of work right here to do. Yeah. But Frank, as always, thank you so much. Um, we always welcome your calls and your commentaries because you're always running on a straight and narrow. You never go left or right on us. So all right, thanks, happy man. new year to you and your family. Okay. <laughs> Pastor Judy, I tell you what, every day is a new day here. The few from the pew. Yeah. And I, I, I do believe in what Frank has to say. We're called to go out into the nations. Yes, we are. But we have a lot of work here to do, too. Yes, we do. We're taking your questions with Pastor Judy Chapman of White Dove Ministries here in Des Moines, www.whitedovministries.net. Take them here at the View from the Pew at 99.3 KTIA or 855-244-0077. Tune in, tune, turn on, and turn it up in Jesus' name. We'll be right back after this. More Pastor Judy Chapman. We're not going anywhere. We're going to have some church <laughs> up in here. <laughs> <laughs> From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free. What type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> 
You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed right or it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Sprout. Why? In the book of Genesis, it's very clear. The Bible says that I put life in the seed. So the future of whatever is coming into your life is locked in a seed. There is a divine continuum. There is a cycle of being able to continue in seeds. So the devil, through Herod, takes on a personal, a personal, a personal offense towards the seed. He doesn't come to the baby shower, but he's mad at the arrival of the seed. He doesn't even care uh, 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 who he's born to. Doesn't ask if the mama is okay. Doesn't ask if Joseph cut the biblical cord. Didn't even ask his name, but the potential of that seed was enough to disturb him and to disturb everything that's around you. So let me tell you this. God is committed to your potential, but hell is horrified of it. You don't have to be who you're going to be in order to be a threat by hell. All you gotta do is have it in seed form. Did you hear that? That was good. Hell is horrified by your potential. Amen. What did you and I talk about in the car today? Yeah. What do you have in you? Yeah. You know, women are not, and you know what, if I offend somebody by this today, I'm not gonna apologize. <laughs> You know, women are not to be walking out the first testament barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen in long <laughs> denim skirts with their hairs up in buns, no makeup, horse buck teeth, and not to be speaking. I'm sorry, but a wife, when a man finds the wife, he finds himself a good thing. <laughs> We're just going to have some church up on that. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And I'm Us sitting ladies here. like that. <laughs> I'm sitting here in front of a beautiful woman, Pastor John Chapman. <laughs> she, you found a good woman. <laughs> and you mean He's my, thanking you, you for saying that. Uh, he better. <laughs> write your checks payable to Reich Plekis, the view from the pew. Make it at least $25 or more. <laughs> Tax deductible. I'll give you my 501c3 number later. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Herod set himself up to fail. Yes. And hell became horrified by what was happening. And hell needs to be more horrified by what's coming now to fruition through the ministries such as White Dove Ministries right. or Cornerstone Family Church or All Nations Church of Chicago. Because I think that God is raising up a new breed of a Christian. You know, these gamers... Boys your age, boys right. my age, right. they are being raised of a mindset that they are not afraid. Right. And they are challenging. Right. And they're strategizing. They and, are strategizing. And they are warriors. That's right. And, you know, they they are of that mindset that they're not going to back down. Right. Right. You know. You, you ain't going to get in my face. You're not going to tell me what to do. But if we, as brothers and sisters of faith of Christ as joint heirs can instill in them yeah. that you are to a joint heir. You stand to inherit the kingdom right. of God yeah. that to do what's right and become righteous, right. that they can go out and win the Franks of the world, the Reichs of the world, the Johns, the Judies, the right. Chinese, the North Koreans, the South Koreans, yeah. you know, whoever it may be 
to go into the world, as Frank said, Matthew right. 24 and 14, right. to quote him, right, and to do what we're supposed to do. Amen. Right. Just one little split hair, though, on the, the video games warring the way of the world. I want my boys to learn to war in love. In love. Amen. Yeah, bringing that gospel boldly, confidently, with all that's in them, in love. Amen. See, you know, there's a reason why I brought you on the show today. <laughs> well, hallelujah. <laughs> We're speaking with Pastor Judy Chapman of White Dove Ministries here today at the View from Pew 99.3. This is my, this truly is my sister. Yes. She knows the good, the bad, the ugly. I talked to her for like an hour and 30 minutes the other day. We dropped calls. I called her right back up, dropped calls, <laughs> t- called right back up, and we picked right back up. But you know what? I could pick up the phone six months from now and we pick up right where we were. Yes, we would. Amen. Yes, we would. Um, there is nothing like the family of Christ. Amen. There's nothing like real brothers and sisters. Your spirits... When your spirit is born again and you meet another born again spirit, you are linked for eternity because we have the same father. Can I borrow the car keys? (laughs) (laughs) Well, let me see. (laughs) Have you done your chores? (laughs) Oh, okay. Anyhow, um, can we touch a little bit on what God's healed you of? You could say pass. Uh, um, You could lead that. Okay. Um, You were... Um, to a, a a state physically where you were not able to function right, mentally, physically, emotionally right, and you complete your husband in uh, thought, mind, <laughs> dinner, uh, <laughs> and and spiritually in the walk with Christ, and especially in your Bible study at that right. time. We are one. You are one. And you were at a point where you were being, and I'm going to use the wrong word. I wish Bob was here because he would correct my English, my grammar. You were inhabilitated. Right. That you couldn't, you could barely walk or talk, verbalize. Right. I was struck actually with a, a very rare condition called trigeminal occipital neuralgia. And it has to do with the nerves coming out of your it head. It had to do with the nerves. It had to. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> had had to. Yeah. And it, it was to a point where you couldn't function. You were laying on the basement floor and against the basement wall just to right. live, breathe, and have your being. Right. But you called on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are a living vessel here today. Amen. He has done an incredible work in my life. He has worked through, he's worked through doctors. He has worked through people and he has brought me to a place that, um, you know, I couldn't even speak for about, uh, six months. I couldn't open my mouth any bigger than to push a Cheerio through my teeth. Right. My Lord. And so it stilled me. I couldn't, I laid in bed wondering, how am I going to preach the gospel? How am I going to worship God? How am I going to sing my songs? And, um, you know, God, God makes a way, come on, God will make a way he does. He will, he will do a miracle in your life one way or another. If you are believing him, he will use people. He will use, he he will use whatever he has, who's ever willing, he will use to bring life and health through the blood of Jesus Christ into your life. And he did that. I, I praise him. I wouldn't be able to sit here and talk to you. Right. So you're saying God is a healer. God is a healer. God is a deliverer. God is a deliverer. God can move a mountain. God can move a mountain. All right. Yes. Well, you heard it right there. I'm, I'm, you know what? I don't have to see a person's limb grow because I know that I know that I know that Judy Woodworth, Chapman, pastor, <laughs> daughter, wife, yeah. mother, yes. is a living vessel in Grandma. front of me. Grandma. Oh, yeah, I, I can't <laughs> forget that either. What's up, Miss Jenna? Yeah. You got to give her a shout out. <laughs> I know that you are a living vessel in front of me because I knew where you were. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. knew how many oxycodones yeah. you were taking. Yeah. We were like twins. Yeah. Yeah. But, I was taking about everything that they could give me. Um, yeah, I was taking it all, and I was pretty much um, bed bound. Comatose. Yes, I was, and yet, as I begin to um, press through that and come forward, my neurologist at one time said, "I don't understand why you are able to be walking, coming into my office, and have a life, begin to have a life with everything in everything that you're taking." Most of my patients that take that are can't even leave their bedroom. And, you know, that was where I was at. But because of Jesus Christ, I can. I can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I mean, that's not me anymore. I'm not where I was. He's brought me so far. And um, praise God, I'm off. I'm off so many things that um, God is good. He's given me my life back. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you heard that right here. So if you need a, 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 if you need a transfusion, (laughs) if you need a transfusion, check out White Dub Ministries at 6,000 Douglas Sundays at 10 o'clock. Yes. Or you can even come to the New Year's Eve service in Palmyra, six miles yes. south of Carlisle, this yes. New Year's Eve for a yes. one-hour service. Uh, I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of wah, shabala, shabala that night because it is in an older community. But the, the Spirit of God is still going to be in the house in that 157-year-old uh, landmark building. Amen. Amen. But um, the Living Word will be there that night. Um, and, and check out uh, Pastor John and Judy Chapman at uh, www.whitedoveministries.net. Um Pastor Judy, if there's one thing that you can do, finances set aside in Christ, what would it be? Hold that thought. Uh, <laughs> I music. will hold that thought. <laughs> <laughs> now she's going to be like, well, hallelujah. <laughs> I see all the questions on the bottom of the page. I can't get to all of them. You know I love you, don't you? Tune in next week. Pray for me next week. We're going to ask for a special. I'm going to ask for your prayers today on the show. You never hear that. So we'll be right back after this. Tune in, turn on, turn it up in Jesus' name with Pastor Judy Chapman. We'll be right back after this. Hey, psst. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car... I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program or log on to transformationstreatment.com. Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships. Transform your world. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. Everybody live
we're back here at the View from the Pew in 99.3. Um, wanting everybody to come, be sure that you're aware of that uh, New Year's Eve at 6 p.m. for one hour only, we're inviting you to come out and experience uh, Pastor John and Judy Chapman of White Dove Ministries at the Palmyra Church. It's a church without a congregation, just six miles south of Carlisle on Highway S23. That's for a one hour New Year's Eve restoration service. It's a service announcing the final stage of the restoration of the 157 year old Palmyra Methodist Episcopal Church. Dress accordingly. It is winter. It's a 157 year old country church, even though it's sealed pretty tight and does have a, a little heater in it. It is still a country church and it is very brisk. And with the, the season that we're in right now, you just need to stay warm. So come out for a one hour candlelit service that night. We're going to give you all some information in regards to what's taking place um, at the historical landmark in Warren County. Um, you're going to get the, the sermon. You're going to get a quick sermon and get a little bit of worship. And then we're going to send you home with some refreshments. So please come out for the New Year's Eve restoration service at the Palmyra Methodist Episcopal Church. That's New Year's Eve at 6 p.m. with Pastors John and Judy Chapman. Welcome back, Pastor Judy. Thank so, you. So all finances aside, if you could do one thing in Christ Jesus. Just one? One thing. Okay. Um, well, they're kind of piggybacked. My husband and I, as you know, ha have ginormous hearts for this country. We have an evangelistic message that we want to bring uh, th through music Amen. and songwriting. We, we are songwriters and musicians, and uh, my husband is an incredible uh, minister that way, speaker. He brings the word forth um, in a very anointed way. And so I would desire greatly to go to just about every city in this country and deliver the word um, to to anybody who who's looking Amen. for any help or hope. And the other thing, though, in that, Reich, I have such a heart for women. I counsel women. Uh, part of our ministry is Dove Counseling, and uh, we also do marriage counseling. But I personally have such a heart for women um, coming through hardship, coming, uh, uh, I, d I identify with women in their struggles as uh, young ladies looking looking to find a way, you know, maybe lost in their life like I was, um, mothers, wives, you know, how or walking this thing out, you know, once we become born again, walking our lives out in Christ is hard. It can be really hard. Um, you know, the trumpets all blow and we all angels yeah. shout hallelujah yeah. when we're born again. But now we have to finish walking this out. And um, I, I love women. I love talking to them and, and uh, helping them through hardship. Amen. So it's a twofold ministry. We can accept that. Thank you. Because, you know, <laughs> all things are made possible in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, so really, you'd be walking out Frank's call. You'd be standing in China looking at America, <laughs> that, uh, that all things would be uh, proclaimed throughout the world, the whole world as a testimony to all nations that you would go into every city in this nation. There you go. And then you'd be standing in this nation and looking at other countries, other cities, and go forth and do those things in another world, in the other third party worlds or yeah. whatever yeah. as well. So you'd be walking out Frank's vision as well. That's right, Frank. <laughs> We're hearing you. <laughs> We're hearing you. <laughs> well, amen. I can accept that. Um, is there um, something for the new year that uh, White Dub Ministries, are you... Um, praying for the the people there. I know you're a small, mighty group. I know that you're focusing in on your Bible study. Um, is somebody working on your website there? Are you? The, are the boys there? Are they developing the sound ministry still for you? Actually, uh, our oldest boy is um, playing the drums. Okay. With our with us, and our youngest boy is playing the bass guitar. All right. Uh huh. And they're learning our music, and they're loving it. And you guys write your own stuff. Yes, we do. Yes, we I do. tell you what, you gifted and talented, anointed, totally Thank anointed. Thank you. And um, Pastor John has, has accepted his calling. He's saying that, you know, we're still doing this here at 6000 Douglas. Yeah. And that he is, does he allow you to speak? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. So if, he believes that women could take the pulpit. Absolutely. He, <laughs> he backs me 100%. Yes. <laughs> I had to get that out. So, um, and he still allows you to cook. Yes, he loves that. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. This just came up. Do you do any outreach ministries? Do you go out to uh, feed the homeless? Do you go out and minister to people? Do you do uh, bookings or engagements? We are looking to go out and do, if, do just about anything somebody's looking for. Oh, no, I didn't say that right. Uh, help if, me say that, right? <laughs> if you call them, they will come. That's right. 
<laughs> was that good? <laughs> that was great. Yeah, okay. we yeah we we want to do it. We are um, energetic. We are uh, looking to be engaged and involved. Um, call us. We'll come speak. We'll come minister. Uh, just. We're, we're all of that. There you go, Sylvia. You heard it right there. If you call, they will come. That's right. So we'll I like just make that. it plain. Um, we're going to have to go here in just a minute. Would you take just a brief moment and say a quick prayer for our city, our nation, our leaders? Yes. Go ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus, we uh, look to walk in obedience to your word. Lord, we lift up the leaders in this nation. I pray, Father, that you would grab a hold of their hearts. I pray, Father, that you would begin to move by your spirit yes, on every leader in every town, in every organization, Father, be it Republican or Democrat, or it, it doesn't matter, Father, we are all people, and we are all people created in your image, Father, each one of us. And so, Father, I pray that you would begin to bring uh, conviction uh, for compassion, um, for, for righteousness' sake, Father, for, um, for our nation to begin to be um, led down the right path. Father, I pray over Des Moines, Lord, that if there's a lost, hurting soul, Father, I pray that you would uh, find an ear to hear them. And God, if we are that ear, we're listening. Father, I pray that um, every minister who's called is, uh, is answering the call and moving forth in that. Father, and I pray that for every, every town, every city, every state in our country, Father, yes, that Lord. America would become all that it's supposed to be yes, in Lord. your heart. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, I ask that you move and have your being on uh, January 7th and 8th for my situation, for my uncle, that righteousness shall stand in the protection of his probate matter. Yes, Lord. Father God, we thank you for the New Year's Eve restoration at Palmyra Church, Methodist Episcopal Church at 6 p.m. down in Palmyra, six miles south of Carlisle. Yes, Lord. With Pastor John and Judy Chapman. Safeguard the highways and the byways of this holiday season, but each and every day. We thank you for the view from the pew. 2013 has been magnificent. I'm not going to complain at all. Thank you, Ryan, Bob Montserrat. I miss you. I love you. Until next time, tune in, turn on, turn it up in Jesus' name. Check us out on YouTube. Amen. <laughs>